Hello everyone and welcome to the 18th lecture of CS2100. Uh, in, in this part one of the lecture we are going to cover conditional probability. First we are going to recall uh, the rule of products from our last lecture. So if we have two independent events E1 and E2 then the probability of both of them happening is given by this rule. So to get the probability of both E1 and E2, we have to multiply the probability of E1 with the probability of E2. Uh, this works only if the two events are independent. Okay, so let's see what happens when we have dependent events. Given events E1 and E2, we say that the probability of E1 given E2 denoted by this expression, so using this bar, um, is the probability that E1 happens assuming that E2 happens. We can compute this probability using this expression. So we have to divide the number of events, uh, the, the intersection of events E1 and events E2 with the number of events uh, E2. Um, this is also called the conditional probability for E1. If E1 and E2 are independent, then the conditional probability of E1 uh, is probability of E1 given E2 and it's just equal to probability of E1. Um, so this makes sense because it doesn't depend on E2. So let's illustrate how we would use this uh, on an example. Um, let's say we have a club uh, with eight sophomores and 12 juniors as members. We want to choose a committee of three at random. Our event E1 is defined as at least one junior on the committee, and our event E2 is defined as at least one sophomore on the committee. We need now to compute a couple of helper values. So the total number of possible committees is choose 3 out of 20, which is equal to 1140. The number of committees with no sophomores, meaning that have just three juniors, is choose 3 out of 12, which is 220. And the number of committees that have at least one sophomore is um, choose 20, choose 3 out of 20 minus choose 3 out of 12, which is equal to 920. Um, so uh, we can compute the number of committees that have at least one sophomore by subtracting the number of committees that have no sophomores from the total number. We've seen um, the application of this rule in the past when we were doing counting. Okay, um, so now the question is, how many of the committees that have at least one sophomore also have at least one junior? Meaning, what is the probability of E1 given E2? Okay, to compute this, first we have to compute what is the number um, of events in this inter intersection of E1 and E2. So this intersection tells us, counts all committees that have exactly two juniors plus all committees with exactly one junior. And if we calculate this, um, in the first case, we have one sophomore and two juniors. In the second case, we have two sophomores and one junior, and the number we get is 864. And then this probability we want to calculate is 864 divided by 920. Um, this is n of E2. 
which is 920, um, and that is equal to 0 0.939. Okay, so this example uh, illustrates how to um, compute conditional probability using counting. Okay, so the general product rule tells us that given two events in an experiment, the probability of both E1 and E2 happening is equal to this expression. So probability of E1 given E2 times probability of E2, and also this expression, probability of E2 given E1 times probability of E1. Now, if you, if we now come back to our example, so it's the same example. We have a club of a sophomores and 12 juniors members. We are choosing committee of three at random. E1 is at least one junior member on the committee. E2 uh, are all the events that have at least one sophomore on the committee. Um, and now we know that number of possible committees is choose three out of 20. Number of committees with no sophomores is choose three out of twelve. Um, then the probability uh, of E two, meaning to have at least one sophomore on the committee, is equal to one minus probability uh, of E two prime, which is no sophomores on the committee. So it's going to be equal to one minus C three choose twelve divided by C. 3 choose 20, and it's equal to this uh, rational number here. And then probability of E2 given me 1, uh, we already computed um, previously. It's equal to this rational number. And so then probability of E1 and E2 is equal to probability of E1 given E2 times probability of 2. And when we put in the numbers that we calculate, we get um, that that is around 0 0.758. And now we can ask ourselves how our probability of E1 and E2 and probability of E1 given E2 different. Um, well, one tells us what is the probability of both of these events happening and the other one tells us the probability of um, e1 happening given that we know that e2 happened so that explains the difference between um, these two okay um, so let's do um, one more example uh, and this is example that leverages the blackjack game. So in the card game blackjack, the first card dealt is face down and the second card is face up. Now let's assume that T uh, be the event that the face down card has value 10. Um, so that's it's either 10, joker, joker, queen or king. And A is the event that the face-up card is an ace. And we want to compute the probability that both of these events happen. So how do we do this? We're going to use our um, general product rule. Probability of the event A happening is 4 divided by 52, because we have four aces in the deck and 52 cards total. And probability that the event T happens is 16 out of 52 because we have four different cards that have value 10 times four suits so that's 16 divided by 52 which is total number of card, cards um, probability that T happens given that A happened um, is equal to 16 divided by 51 um, we have one card less because we drew an ace um, and probability um, that A happens given T is 4 divided by 51 um, 
because again we used up one card to draw uh, this card that has value 10. So now probability that a and b happen is probability of t given a times probability of a um, and when you plug in the numbers you get 16 over 6, 663 um, and that is the same as probability that a happens given t times probability of t um, so these two expressions um, should always be the same okay so this example um, again illustrates how to use conditional probabilities so the following example um, illustrates um, how conditional probabilities can be used um, in a drug testing setting. So let V be the event of a positive steroid test and S the event an athlete uses steroids. And we can assume that 3% of all athletes use steroids, meaning the probability that S happens is equal to 0 0.03. So um, when an athlete has used steroids, the test is correct with probability 0 0.995 and incorrect with probability 0 0.005, meaning the probability of V, uh, which means um, positive test, given that the athlete actually used steroids uh, is 0 0.995. When the athlete has not used steroids, the test is correct with probability 0 0.98 and incorrect with probability 0 0.02. So the, probab the condition probability that uh, we get a positive test if um, the athlete has not used steroids is 0 0.02. Now the, we want to answer um, some interesting questions about this drug testing. So the first one is, what is the probability um, that an athlete tests positive and that the athlete uses steroids? Um, so the probability here is probability of V given S times probability of S. So probability of V given S is 0 0.995 times probability of S which is 0 0.03. And so the probability of these two events happening is 0 0.02995, this number here. Then, um, we want to compute the probability that um, we get a positive steroid test um, and the athlete, the athlete did not use steroids. Um, so again, we have all the numbers, we plug them in and we get 0 0.0194. Um, so interestingly enough, these two probabilities are actually pretty close to each other. And finally, uh, maybe the most interesting one is what is the probability an athlete chosen randomly uses steroids but won't be caught? So we're looking for a probability of a negative test while the athlete uses steroids. And we can compute this as probability of the negative test given um, the athlete uses steroids times the probability that the athlete uses steroids. Um, And so this probability is 0 0.000015. So it's extremely low. So this example illustrates um, how uh, conditional probabilities can be used um, to compute probabilities of some interesting um, questions that come up during uh, testing for steroids in competitions. In our last example problem, uh, we're going to look into um, computing two 
different kinds of probabilities related to the problem of choosing two marbles from an urn or a bag that contains three red, five white, and eight green marbles. So the first question we want to answer is what is the probability that both marbles are red? Let's see how we would compute that. So we want to compute the probability um, that R1, meaning that the first chosen marble is red, and probability of R1 and R2, where R1 denotes the probability that the first marble is red, and R2 that the probability that the second marble is red. And we can compute this using the product rule, um, meaning by multiplying probability of R2 given R1 times probability of R1. And so let's compute these helper values. So probability of event R1, which is that the first marble chosen is red, is equal to 3 over 16. Uh, we have 60 marbles total, and three of them are red. Now, probability that the second marble chosen is red, given that we already pulled one red out, is 2 over 15. We have one less red marble in the bag. And so when we plug these numbers in, we get the probability of R1 and R2 is 1 over 40. Our second question is, what is the probability that one is white and one is green? Um, so let's first uh, denote um, the first uh, marble being white as W1 and the second one is green as G2, or the first one is as, as green as G1, and the second one is white as W2. Um, so we want to compute the probability that the first one is white, second green, and we want to add to this the probability that the first one is green, the second one is white. Um, so here we're using um, this rule that adds the probabilities. And so this is going to be equal to, then we can expand this using the general rule of products into conditional probabilities. Uh, and then we can compute these values similarly to how we did them in the problem question one. And the final number is one over three. Um, so that's the probability that one is white and one is green. Okay, so with this, um, 